Okay, so chapter 17, seventh edition of the NASM Certified Personal Trainer textbook. And uh, chapter 17 is on balance training concepts. So we did core training in chapter 16, and now we're on to balance training concepts. Um, as always, just make sure that you've got a piece of uh, paper that you can take notes on and uh, read, write, obviously, and then you can recite um, as well. Uh, writing implement. And of course, uh, keep in mind that as you go through this particular chapter, um, it's going to focus on um, the actual training, training principles that you would incorporate for balance specific type of training. So just as with the, with the core training chapter, chapter 16, it's not that it's a long chapter. Uh, basically what, what NASM has done is they've given you quite a few pages, as I've said before, quite a few pages on actual exercises to use. A couple of things specific in the balance training part that are very, very useful, particularly in the, in the real world, but they've given you a lot of, a lot of uh, exercise examples that you can, that you can use. So when we're talking about uh, balance training and I'll get to the front here, balance training really involves um, using uh, using your muscles in a way that's going to allow for an appropriate positioning of the body based on your center of gravity. So again, balance training, keeping your body in the right position, irrespective of the environmental conditions that you're, that you're in, right? Keeping your body from basically falling over, being able to manage your center of gravity appropriately. Um, if you fall outside of your center of gravity's uh, ability to, to, maintain, to maintain you upright, you fall over. Okay, so that's what happens. Your center of gravity is what determines um, basically, basically where your body is moving, whether it's going to fall forward, backward, sideward, whatever the case is. Your ability to maintain control, your, uh, your center of gravity within perhaps environmentally unstable conditions. That's basically what balance training is really helping you with. Based on the, um, your center of gravity, your base of support, and uh, whatever the limits of stability are, those are your three, your three sidebars that you, you do need to know. There are, there's basically three sort of levels of balancing. There's static uh, balance, there's semi-dynamic, and then of course there's uh, dynamic balance. And so the idea is that depending on uh, the type of exercises you're doing, the type of equipment you're using, you can actually make, make those exercises more challenging to the balance control systems, which is basically what we want to do. So in order to uh, sort of, in order to look at um, balance training from the, from that one perspective, you can actually use BOSU ball, stability balls. You can use these pieces of equipment to actually make the environment uh, more unstable. And this is where the concept of proprioceptively rich environmental conditions comes in. And so um, the goal here is to, is to not only obviously train people, but to help them with their, with their balance, uh, balance by using these different strategies that um, that you're going to read through in chapter 17. Now, the sidebars that are here, I'm going to give you a couple of couple of terms like the vestibular system, the somatosensory system, uh, sensory motor function, neuromuscular control. That's a review, by the way, neuromuscular control, if you remember in previous chapter. So when you go through these definitions, make sure you understand how they pertain to actual exercises and training. Uh, for the most part, you're going to be incorporating balance training into the normal training scenario. However, what, what NASM uh, wants you to consider and think about is balance training um, as its own sort of element in a, in a um, integrated training model. So mechanisms of balance, by the way, just understanding balance itself. So visual cues, uh, vestibular, which is the inner ear, cues, and then the uh, somatosensory, uh, which is going to be the other elements of your body, which, which ironically enough are the mechanoreceptors um, and other neuro, neurological, neuromuscular 
components in your joints and in your muscles. So think about it. If you close your eyes, there is a visual element to balance that gets thrown off when you close your eyes because you don't have any visual cues. So the, so the uh, visual or, or visual cortex gives you, uh, gives you the ability to maintain balance. But there's also um, inside your ear, inside the inner ear or your vestibular system, there's fluid containing, fluid containing um, areas inside the inner ear that will throw off or help you maintain balance. So when, when these particular fluids inside the inner ear uh, sense a change in position, they send neuro, neurological um, data to the brain and your brain says, well, I guess I'm tilting over. I guess I'm leaning forward too much. So combine that with visual cues and you have a really good, strong uh, sense of, of balance. But on top of that, you also have the somatosensory and the somatosensory component of balance are all those other elements outside of the vestibular and visual system that give your body cues as to where your limbs are, where your torso is in time and space. When you got all three of those things working really well, you can stand on your, you can stand on your toes, you can do a handstand, you can do all these different things. You can stand on one foot, by the way, uh, depending on your clients, you'd be surprised at the balance issues that that people face. So, how do you make it? Um, how do you make for additional balance training? Well, normally the way we do it is instead of using two feet, for instance, we stand on one foot. Instead of standing on one foot, we stand on a on an in, on an unstable environment to create a semi dynamic balancing scenario. So. Scientific rationale, of course, there is a scientific rationale for balance training. And depending on, again, the individual, um, they may need more balance training at the very beginning of a training routine um, than, than other folks. And they may continue to need balance training throughout the entirety of their training. Um, so again, performance as well as uh, injury resistance, right? Balance training helps performance. Again, even athletes, uh, can have, you know, so-so balance issues. And so you would need to help them and train them through balance training. And again, as I've trained athletes, particularly with wobble boards, we used to use these things called wobble boards. Now we basically just use BOSU balls, um, a lot easier to deal with, but wobble balls, I used to actually make my own piece of, piece of wood, um, circular piece of wood, and then a piece of plywood on top of that. Um, and, and that would be on the ground. And the and the board itself would would wobble and you'd stand on it and it would that's why they call it a wobble board but now i have clients stand on stand on a bosu ball right with the flat top up and the and the curve underneath and that creates an unstable stable environment um balance training for performance then actually has um important components to it and so that's why table 17 one there's your balance training performance Benefits, injury, resistance, same thing. You might have older clients or you might have clients with orthopedic issues like ACL tears. Um, and so if they're, if they're rehabbing back from that, um, balance training is actually one of the first things you're going to institute in your training or at least have as a part of the particular exercises that you'll be doing. So page 551, of course, gives you the balance training um, uh, bolster resistance to injury, right? There's a couple of things there. Rehab, rehabilitation, critical um, for rehabilitation. And there are specific balance training techniques, for instance, that uh, therapists will use depending on the depending on the particular issue that the individual has. So um, importance of properly training the balance system. Um, I would I would say this is one of those chapters where you should read read the um, and look at more in, intentionally the stretch your knowledge um, box that they have there. Guidelines for balance training. So here it is, exercise selection and the other variables, uh, what you would need for uh, what the parameters are for balance training. And then how do you design a balance training program? You know, again, we move through into this uh, progressions. And so basically what NASM has done is they've given you these bullet points for you to look at progressions starting from a, a tandem stance. And they have that for you. They have it in their uh, 
figures for you to look at all the way up to the progressions would be all the way up to a single leg throw and catch. So that would be the progression, one of the progressions. They're not saying this is what you do. They're just showing you or giving you the ideas of what the progression would look like. Make sure you know, by the way, just like with the core training principles, make sure you know what a progression looks like, right? Um, you don't want to jump from single leg balance to the single leg lift and chop. You're jumping over basic standard progressions that you would want to uh, in, um, um, initiate. Um, page 556, slow down. Stop, go to your training tip box. Okay, that's a very important, um, very important uh, box to look at now. Okay, you'll notice that um, within the other chapters, normally I will not recommend or tell you to go and look those. You can read, read them through, of course, it's all good information. But this is one of those where you really want to look at your, your um, sample progression. So progression one, two, progressions three, read through those, understand, for instance, um, exercises of progression one should initially involve little joint motion of the balance leg. And this is just giving you a specific uh, balancing, balancing exercise. So read through that. Also, again, a little bit of review, the five kinetic chain checkpoints. Here, as with the core, um, how should your feet be? Look at your five kinetic, start at the feet, knees, hips, shoulders, and neck and head. Well, how should the feet be pointing? They should be pointing straight ahead when we're doing balance training. What about knees? In line with the second, third toes. So read through that. Hips should be level and in neutral position, straightforward information. Here is now, as we uh, start on page 557, you're just gonna have a series of balance exercises. Be very careful. There's always a safety issue when we're, when we're dealing with balance exercises. Mm. Understand the technique, understand any safety concerns, concerns, and know what the progressions are. How do you progress on a single leg step up or a single leg jump hop, something like that? Know the appropriate progression for this particular for this particular modality of training. Safety is a key issue. Your goal with balance training, just like with core stabilization, the core training, not to add resistance, right? That's not the goal. Is to add heavier and heavier weights and prove to everybody that you can that you can do heavy balance on one leg. You know, holding a book. Be very careful. I would stick with these exercises that NASM and if you. Um, if you feel like you can move, uh, move into other particular exercises for balance, absolutely go for it. Um, again, as we move through, you're going to start to get to the end of the chapter. A lot of really good, a lot of really good um, exercise sequences here that you should be, be looking over. Remember, there's safety, safety concerns. Make sure that you're reading those safety, safety issues as well as the technique. Um, brief summary of the chapter. It's not the longest chapter for balance and core, but it's a critical, it's a critical training uh, modality that you need to uh, put in place either as a standalone training or in conjunction or as a part of the particular exercises that you're doing. Just be very careful, obviously, chapter review. And then of course, your, um, um, your highlights, your bullet points. Again, good idea to read through those. That, um, that finishes up chapter 17 and uh, see you on chapter 18.